And lit, we go to Steve Stolifer, who is the president of the Jefferson County Commission. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning. So two new appointees to the Jefferson County Council. Bill and I got into discussion on air in regards to what happens in November with these two newly appointed county commissioners. You had texted me some answers on that, and I thought we could use some further clarification. So, Steve, can you give us the end result of these two newly appointed county commissioners come November? Yes, sir. The two the two positions that will be additional positions that will be open will be on the ballot this fall will be the Harpers Ferry District, where which uh, – uh, which is vacated, and also the Shepherdstown District um, Commissioner. Um, the Republican and Democrat executive committees will nominate or will put forward to a uh, name to be on the ballot this fall. So this fall we will have four, as, as most people know, Jefferson County has five county commissioners. This fall we will have four county commissioners on the ballot. We will have um, a as planned, the Middleway District, which which uh, is uh, Commissioner Tabb's seat, she's uh, uh, the the seat that she sits in. She's retiring, um, and then we'll have Claire Ath, this the seat that Claire Ath uh, set in, where Posh, uh, Commissioner Maje sits in now. So that's the Charlestown District will be on the ballot, and then the two new ones will also be on the ballot, which is Harpers Ferry and Shepherdstown. Okay, so. Do they have the two new ones? Do they have the option of running for those seats? Well, ha- how this will work, they will. You, you, anyone, anyone that is interested, <clears throat> excuse me, will interview with the executive committee. I can only speak for the Republican executive committee. Um, they are going to receive applications or resumes to till June twenty eighth, and they plan to interview for the person that they plan to pick to be on the ballot on July 20th. I, I don't know the process for the Democrat uh, executive committee, but that's that's how the Republican um, Party is moving forward. Um, those names have to be at the clerk's office, I believe, at 78 days prior to the election, which puts us right about the middle of August. Does Kraus switching to the Mountain Party guarantee that the Mountain Party will have a nominee in this process? The Mountain Party, uh, they typically nominate uh, people to be on the ballot from the state level. The Mountain Party does not have a local county executive committee. So if if you – they've had people that they've nominated to run for offices in the past. Uh, I don't know if they'll nominate anybody from the state or they, they, they have a little bit different process how they – how they put people on the ballot and i'm not real familiar with the, that process but more familiar with uh obviously the republican and democrat uh parties because they pretty much operate the same on how they uh they're set up and how they're as far as their executive committees are are set up steve bill stubblefield we we're in a risk of trying to, of, of confusion there's a lot of information here we've got four individuals four offices two of which will run as they normally do, and they would be for the Middle Way and the Charlestown districts, and they'll be replacing Tab and, and uh, Ash. App. Uh, App, yeah. Uh, but the other two is the one in question. Here we've got a couple of three moving parts. Right now they are appointed. They are appointed by the executive committee of the Mountain Party and the Republican Party. But there is a limit, time limit, of how the appointment would be. Also, if uh, if the Supreme Court overrules the uh, uh, the finding of the three judges, then Kraus and Jackson will automatically go back to their respective positions. Uh, but let's working on the assumption that they are not uh, that Jackson and Kraus do not get reappo- get back to their seats. Then there is this appointment process. But after the appointment. As for the general election, uh, the there's they two different ways they can get on the ballot. One through the executive committee, and also by signatures. Uh, they can get one percent of the signature of the last election, and anybody can be on the general election ballot. Am I not correct on that? Uh, I'm not real sure about the the signature process. I'm not I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure how that works. That's probably more of a 
uh, question for uh, Mac Warner's office. Uh, that, I've never heard of that before. I, I do know that um, I do know how we're moving forward as far as the uh, executive committees are the executive, Republican executive committees moving forward. Um, and, and again, that's that's the interview process. Uh, we'll interview uh, people who are interested, and then we will uh, the, the Republican executive committee will move forward one name that will be on the ballot um, in um, in in the fall. If for uh, whatever reason, uh, the two commissioners who were recently removed, if they did not get removed until after August 13th, their appointment would last until 26, 2026. But because it was between the primary and the general election, it goes back to the executive committees to put names forward to be on the ballot this fall. John Gilstrap. This is like reading the rules of cricket. <laughs> I thought the rules were pretty simple. Hit the ball, everywhere's in play. Um, all right, so we had uh, Dr. Cook on the show yesterday, and um, he told us that he was a Republican until two weeks ago, and then he shifted parties to the Mountain Party so that he would qualify to be named to the, um, to the commission. And I believe there was a news story that preceded that that said he was not, in fact, the uh, recommendation of the Mountain Party to serve in that position. So what's going on? Okay. This is confusing. You're exactly right. This is very confusing. We, we, were, uh, we were running on two different state laws parallel to each other. One was 6-6 and one was 310. 310 is really simple, I, I feel. And when somebody resigns, you have, the commission has 30 days to appoint uh, somebody in that position if they fail to act within 30 days or, or if there's a tie it then goes to the executive committee they uh, will send three names to the county commission and then there's a process for the uh, county commission to pull on those names and and then you have your candidates just like just as we went through that's what started uh, this mess we, yes yes exactly what started this mess <laughs> i'll use your words now, 6-6 six, six is a little different. 6-6-7 six, six, is a little bit different. It says that we shall appoint a temporary position uh, person. could be from, and it does not state that they have to be from any particular party. They could be from any party, um, and they, no matter how long they sat in the party or, or how long they've been a member of the party. Um, like you stated, Dr. Cook switched his party to Mountain Party, and... He was appointed. Well, under 6-6, he could legally be appointed because he was a temporary replacement. Under under 310, he, the commission would not have been able to appoint him. Now, this is where it gets tricky. If they – he was – under 6-6, he was a temporary appointment that was, he would serve up to 30 days. But since they appealed, he will serve in that position as long as the appeal – is, is moving forward or as long as appeals in place. Um, as you said, he switched his party and may have not been in the party uh, for the 310 requirement of 60 days. Well, once the appeal is over with, that's my understanding, and I probably need clarification from this, from, this, uh, from our attorney, but it's my understanding you go by that date when they're – removal is so then that will give dr cook the 60-day requirement under 310 that yeah. sounds simple you know, doesn't it yeah now I know, I know oh now i get it <laughs> yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let, yeah let's let's go with something simpler steve there is sure. uh, some talk some some thought you uh the solar panel solar farms in jefferson county is a is a controversial subject you are well you are recognized as being a proponent of the solar farms dr cook also is being viewed as proponent of the solar farms the argument has been given that dr cook was appointed to give additional support to you for the solar farm debates you want to discuss it sure absolutely i i, I don't know I, first off i I don't know Dr. Cook's position on solar. I've never talked so to him about. He's it. a board member so of. Some, he's a board member on certain uh, uh, certain solar farm groups or organizations. Yeah. Um, yeah. I again, I, I never talked to him about it. Um, I don't know how much support um, you know where this 
I'll call it rhetoric is coming from because the solar um, ordinance is already drafted and in place. So I don't know that why we would need any more support for solar right now. Um, during the entire uh, writing of the uh, ordinance, I certainly recused myself uh, from that process. Um, the ordinance is in place. Um, there's, I don't know why he would need to be a, uh, you know, a pro solar guy. It's everything's in place now, so it's it's already been voted on. Um, just to remind everybody, it was a unanimous vote for approval for the solar uh, ordinance. It was a unanimous vote at the planning commission, and it was a unanimous vote at the county commission. That included so, the votes of commissioners Krause and Jackson. That in, uh, this took place prior to uh, uh, Kraus uh, coming into office. So Just that Jackson, was a yes. Yeah, so so it was a uh, vote for um, the solar ordinance uh, by commis uh, former Commissioner Jackson. Absolutely, got it. Uh, now, enough on solar for a moment, Steve. Can we talk about the fiscal health of Jefferson County and give us an update on the, the latest in regards to the county's finances? Yes. Um, as, as you're well aware, um, and I know it was a, on a segment last week that there was a talk about our budget, and we talked about uh, in the past with some issues we've had um, with with our budget and our finances, and we – we have had a tremendous amount of turnover in our county, and mainly because of we had a certain commissioner um, that if uh, they didn't agree with a staffer, they, they would get attacked on their friend's blog. And we had a lot of turnaround. We had a finance director resign in the middle of budget, and it, it created a lot of chaos. Um, this year, when we dug into the budget, um, we were, I, I won't say it was just gone. It was just, I would use the term probably misplaced, over $4 million. But we have uh, figured that out now. And uh, and it was a rainy day fund that was put into the general. And we're back on track as far as our budget is concerned right now. Um, moving forward with, um, you know, a lot of other things that, that's going on in the county. We're currently working on our, our comp plan, and our comp plan is expected to be co completed this fall. Um, and another uh, big item that we're also involved with is the Harpers Ferry um, Hilltop House. They've asked for a TIF district. We did approve, the county commission did approve uh, this TIF district, and it had to go to the state for uh some other uh, checks and balances, for lack of a better word, and we're expecting to have that back this summer to finalize the TIF district to start on um, that build in Harpers Ferry. Steve, as the Jefferson County Commission president, does the buck stop with you in regards to the money issues that the county was having? Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, there, there was issues everywhere um, when we couldn't keep good staff in place um that that's tough um but we were able to you know the, like i said the chaos is over with now and we're back to normal business um we, we were able to find where these problems were made and we fixed it and we're moving forward just last week we were able to give all of our employees we um a five percent cola they were very happy with that um, as you, as well as, as you know well, the inflation rates are out of control right now. Um, but yes, I mean, you, you know, it is it is everyone's responsibility that's on the commission, and you know, the fact that we couldn't keep uh, you know employee people employed, um, they were constantly being attacked if, if if certain commissioners didn't agree with them. Hey, Steve, um, who let's put a name to this. Who who are the attacking commissioners? Um, the the the, uh, the commissioner that was the commissioner that was feeding the blog and there is a news article uh, on that I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, it, uh, it was in the spirit of Jefferson, by the way. Um, I'd be happy to send that to you. Okay. But the the, uh, the the commissioner that would uh, feed the attacks was uh, former commissioner Jackson. Okay, 
<clears throat> so do these do the staff work for all of the commissioners at one time? I mean, who do they actually work for? Is there a, a administrator to whom they report? The how the chain of command it goes from county commission to to administrator, county administrator, and uh, then the county administrator then is in charge of uh, our finance director, um, HR, and then all the department heads. So was it the administrator that was under it? Because I had heard that it was the finance it was the finance director that lasted like twenty eight hours or something. It was it was. Yes, yes, we've had um, we've had uh, multiple uh, finance directors and we've had multiple uh, county administrators uh, in Jefferson County. Just to give you an idea. In in directly under the county commission, we have uh, in the Hunter House. We'll call it is where our office is. We have five people that work in the hunter house um in the last two years we've had 10 turnovers so imagine just gutting that office twice and that's that's what we had that that's the kind of chaos we had um I, and i believe we had four or five finance directors we're on our um fourth third or fourth uh county administrator um it's it was pretty bad um you know these people they come to jefferson county they want to work and they want to do a good job but they don't want to go home to their family and and pull up social media and there they are with a picture and somebody saying very negative things and uh, about them um it's one thing if you're elected but when you're a county employee I, I feel that's very unacceptable steve i want to thank you for your time this morning i appreciate it as always thank you have a great day